Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And for today's lesson, we're going to talk about some subtraction facts, right? And we're also going to talk about how to use number bonds in order to do some subtraction problems, all right? So we got four examples behind us. The first example is 13 minus 7. The second example is 12 minus 9. The third example is 16 minus 5. The fourth example is 15 minus 8. Now, if you don't have these subtraction facts memorized already, that's fine. Eventually you will, you'll have them memorized. You'll have them memorized, you'll be able to look right at them and you'll immediately recognize what the difference is. Difference is what we call the answer when we do subtraction. So you'll immediately recognize that, just like you immediately might recognize one of your siblings or you immediately recognize one of your parents. It's gonna be that easy, but that takes time and practice. That might not happen overnight and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Don't get discouraged if you don't immediately memorize your subtraction facts. Don't get discouraged if you don't immediately memorize your addition, multiplication, or division facts. Just keep working at it, keep practicing, I promise you. The only time you won't know it, you won't learn it, is if you give up or when you give up, all right? So, first of all, what's really happening when we're doing a subtraction problem? We're trying to figure out how many numbers are between these two numbers, right? If we think about it on, in terms of a number line, and that's actually another way to do these problems. I'm going to do another video where I talk about subtraction in the context of using a number line. All right. But we're not doing that here. Here, we're going to use number bonds. We're going to use number bonds. All right. We're going to subtract using number bonds. All right. Now, there's a name for this. The first number in a subtraction problem is called the menu end. The menu end. Just some vocabulary. Um... So let me write that right here. It's called the min u end. The second number in a subtraction problem is called the sub tra hen. You might not hear those terms used that frequently, but that's okay. At least you know what they are, regardless of who else is not is or is not using them. All right. So the first number is called your min u end. The second number is called your sub tra hen. But sometimes you just refer to it as the first number and the second number. You know, all right. Now we're trying to figure out how many numbers are between 13 and seven, right? Because that's going to be our answer. That's the difference between 13 and seven. That's why we say that the answer in a subtraction problem is called the difference, right? Like when somebody say, what difference does it make? If it doesn't make any difference, that means that the value of the first thing minus the value of the second thing are equal. They're the same. So therefore, what happens when you subtract something from the same thing? or you subtract five minus five, you get zero, means there's zero difference. So that's what that means when somebody says, what's the difference, or it ain't no difference, right? So understand, like, that's how math is intertwined in everything we deal with in everyday life. Even if you think something is not mathematical, oftentimes it is very mathematical, right? We just may not see it like that. Like, just the phrase I just talked about, what difference does it make? That's a mathematical question, right? It's a mathematical question because it's based on doing subtraction, right? Now, there's clearly a difference between 13 and 7. So, like, in everyday life, if somebody is talking about something that you could assign a value of 13, like you could give, give that thing a value of 13, whatever that thing might be, and then they saying, okay, you're trying to say, well, it's the same as this other thing, but then the other thing has a value of 7. So, clearly, there's a difference, because these are two different numbers and there are numbers in between these. So there's a difference in value. So that's what somebody is trying to say. So just keep that in mind. Now, if we use a number bond to answer this question, what we're going to deal with is the bigger number first. And this is kind of similar to using number bonds with doing addition, but not exactly. So we pick the bigger number first. So the bigger number is 13. So 10 is still our happy number. Right. Ten is our happy number. Right. Why is ten a happy number? Because ten makes addition and subtraction easier. Right. And we're dealing with the base ten system. So we want to use ten. So what do I do with 13? I break 13 down into 10 plus three. So it helps to also know some of our addition facts before we even get into this. So 13 is the same thing as 10 plus three. So watch this. I got 10 and I got three. Right. 13 is 10 plus three. Now. This is something else I want to point out. Some subtraction facts involving 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. 10 minus 2 is 8. 10 minus 3 is 7. 10 minus 4 is 6. 10 minus 5 is 5. 10 minus 6 is 4. 
10 minus 7 is 3, 10 minus 8 is 2, 10 minus 9 is 1, 10 minus 10 is 0. These need to be memorized, right? Because you're going to apply these, or if you haven't written down on your paper, that's fine. You can refer to them as long as they're written down on your paper, or if there's a poster in whatever room you might be in, maybe post it up to the wall or something. Um, but actually writing these down will help you to memorize them as well. So I highly recommend that you write these down over and over again until you memorize them. I'm going to use this now. So, right. So now, originally I was trying to do 13, take away seven. But what I did was in order to make the math easier, because I'm using these 10 subtraction facts, these number 10 subtraction facts, right? What if I did 10, take away seven? I found out the difference between 10 and seven. What I'm essentially doing is breaking the problem down into two separate parts. That's really what I'm doing. Instead of just straight finding out what the difference between 13 and 7 is, I could break it down and I can kind of use 10 as a boundary. So first I figure out what's the difference between 10 and 7. So watch this. I'm going to do 10 minus 7. Now I know what 10 minus 7 is because I got this right here. 10 minus 7 is 3. So 10 minus 7 is 3. So the difference between 10 and 7 is 3. Now, but we still got this other 3 right here. So what I'm going to do with that? You got to add that. I know this might seem a little confusing because this is subtraction. So you say you might say, well, why am I doing addition if we're doing a subtraction problem? Because we're basically adding up the two differences. We're adding up the two differences. So what we just did was we broke this 13 down into 10 and 3. So what we did was we, we just figured out the difference between 10 and 7. And now we're about to figure out the difference between 13 and 10. And the difference between 13 and 10 is this number right here. So basically, we find the two differences, then we put them together to get the total difference. So we're going to do 3 plus 3, which is 6. Now, like I said, like once you memorize your subtraction facts, you're not going to need to do none of this because you're going to have it memorized in your head. But it's helpful to know this, helpful to know this skill still because as you're doing other problems that are more advanced and more complex, you can still pull from this skill set, all right? You can still use these skills to do more advanced problems and more difficult problems later on. All right, so the answer to number one is six. The difference between 13 and seven is six. Or another way to say it, 13 minus seven equals six. All right? Now, and notice what we did, right? We broke the bigger number down into a number bond, right? Based on addition facts, right? We know 13 is the same thing as 10 plus 3, right? Then we subtract the other number from 10 to find the difference between that number and 10. And then we already know the difference between that number, uh, this number, the first original number, and 10 was 3. So you just add that with the difference that you just found, all right? I know I said a whole lot. It might seem a little confusing, but it's, I promise you it's going to make a little more sense as we get to number two, number three, and number four, all right? Now, number two says 12, take away nine. Okay, watch this. We look for the bigger number first. So that's step one. You should write that in your notes if you're writing this down in terms of step one, step two, and so on. The bigger number is 12. We're going to create a number bond with the number 12. So watch this. We got boom, 10, and 2. Because why do I do that? Because 10 plus 2 is 12. That's why. Now, uh, 6 plus 6 is also 12. So you might be wondering why I didn't use that. And that's a good question. When we do math, you should always ask questions. Always ask why. That's just a good skill to have in life. And math can help you to develop that skill, right? Because we want one of our numbers to be 10 because 10 is our happy number, right? 10 is our happy number and it makes us happy. That's how we can remember that because... It makes the math easier to accomplish. And also it takes us back to ancient Kemet, right? And in the Nile Valley, so in the Nile Valley civilization from thousands of years ago, the Happy River was the name for the Nile River. All right. So we got 10 and 2, right? That's our next step. Then we're going to do subtraction. We're going to find the difference between 10 and the subtrahend or the second number. So we're going to do 10 minus 9. So 10 take away 9. And if you don't know what 10 take away 9 is, you have these facts written down. 10 take away, take away 9 is 1. So that means that the difference between 10 and 9 is 1. But then we need to know the difference between 12 and 10. 
so we can know the total difference between 12 and 9, right? So that we already know the difference between 12 and 10 is 2, because 10 plus 2 gives you 12. 12 minus 10 is 2. Addition and subtraction are exact opposites. They are opposite operations. So I put a comma, and then I'm going to put this one that I just figured out, and I'm going to add it with the other difference, which is 2, which gives me 3. So what I'm basically doing in this method is I'm combining the differences. I'm combining the differences. I'm finding all the differences. I'm figuring out all the differences, and I'm putting them all together. That's what I'm doing. I'm combining the differences. All right? Now let's go to number three. Again, step one. Locate the bigger number. The bigger number out of 16 and 5 is 16. Second step. Create a number bond using 10. So I got 10 and 6. Not 10 and 5, because that don't add up to 16. Not 10 and 4. That don't add up to 16. Not 10 and 7. That don't add up to 16. You need a number bond that includes 10, but adds up to that number. Includes 10, but adds up to that number. Includes 10, but adds up to that number. So 10 and 6 gives you 16. Now, we got to do the subtraction. We got to find the difference between 10 and 5. So we do 10, take away 5, which equals 5. How do I know that? Because it says right here, and I trust this, right? I mean, I don't, know, I don't know that just because it's written right here. I know it because this is correct. I just know. And you can count with your fingers and prove it. 10 minus 5 is 5. If you have $10 and you spend $5, you should have $5 left. All right? So 10 take away 5 is 5. So the difference between 10 and 5 is 5. And we already knew that the difference between 16 and 10 was 6. The difference between 16 and 10 was 6. So now we got to combine our differences. I think I might call this the combined differences method. I might do that. Let me write this down. Combined differences method. I might call it that. Combined differences method. I might call it that. Well, that might be one of the things I call this. There's a couple things we can call it. We could just say subtracting using number bonds. You know, we can call it what we want. We don't have to always call a method the name that somebody else already called it. We can create names. You know, it's like self-determination. Kujish Hakalia from the Nguzo Saba. Second day of Kwanzaa. We can, we can get like that. All right. So the difference between 10 and 5 is 5. And then the difference between 16 and 10 was already 6. So I got to combine the differences. Put the differences together. Right. So I'm going to have 5 plus 6. And 5 plus 6 is 11. Now, you'd have to know a little bit of addition to know that. Well, 5 plus 6 is 11, all right? But you can count with your fingers to figure that out, all right? If you don't know your addition facts, it's very helpful with this skill and this process to know your addition facts, all right? Last but not least, number four, 15 minus 8, or what's the difference between 15 and 8? Step one, start with the bigger number, in this case, 15. Step two, create a number bond using 10. You don't just make any number bond, right? Your number bond has to include 10 in it, all right? So if you include 10, you got 10 and 5. Not 10 and 4, not 10 and 8, not 10 and 9, not 10 and nothing else, but 10 and 5. So we got 10 and 5 because 10 plus 5 equals 15. Now we're going to subtract and find the difference between 10 and 8. 10 and 8. And then after that, we already know the difference between 15 and 10, which is 5. So we're going to combine the differences. Combine the differences. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to do 10 take away 8. Because we got 10, we're taking away this 8. And that's equal to 2. How do I know that? Because I got that written right here. 10 minus 8 is 2. These are my subtraction from 10 facts. My subtraction from 10 facts. 10 minus 1 all the way up to 10 minus 10. These should be memorized ASAP. These should be memorized. All right? So 10 minus 8 is going to be 2. And then I'm going to take this 2, because that's one of my differences, and I'm going to combine it with the other difference, which is 5. So 2 plus 5 gives me 7. And if you don't know what 2 plus 5 is off the top of your head, that's fine. Just count with your fingers. 1 and 2. Like, this is something my, my youngest son Kwame says. Kwame, and I, and I like how he does this. I never conceptualized math like this. He actually says it like 2 plus 5 means something. He says 2 plus 5 means 7. Instead of saying 2 plus 5 equals 7, or 2 plus 5 is 7, which makes sense because it shows how 
within the English language, he's using the English language to give mathematical information. Because two plus five does mean seven. The equal sign can be synonymous with the word means, like as if it's a definition. So seven is defined by two plus five. So if you got two and then you add five, you just count your fingers. Two on one hand, five on the other, and just count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. So two plus five does mean seven. Like Kwame said. Shout out to Kwame, by the way. All right, so these are our answers. 13 take away seven is six. 12 take away nine is three. 16 take away five is 11. 15 take away eight is seven. All right, so this is just a little bit of subtraction using number bonds. We could call it the um, combined differences method. I might start calling it that. But anyway, I showed you how to do this. Now you got to go get some practice, create some problems, pick some two digit numbers and subtract some one digit numbers. Pick any two digit numbers and subtract one digit numbers. All right. Start off with that. Then maybe you advance into bigger two digit numbers and then you subtract some other two digit numbers or something like that. But I'll create some videos like that down the line. All right. So definitely go get some practice and I'll catch up with you on the next video. Peace.